<clears throat> hey guys, welcome to Fearless Cooking. Hey, I'm glad you're joining me today. T today we're going to do something a little different, and then the next several weeks are going to be the same thing. Um, these are these are some of these things are, are meals I've never cooked before, so we're just going to be kind of feeling our way out, you know, to, together on the thing, which I. They may not like instill a ton of confidence in you, but I promise we'll get through them all. Okay. Um, to, today, we're. I decided instead of like saying like a stir fry with chicken breasts, I was like, okay, wait a minute. There's going to be people that have got that have already bought like a lot of canned uh, meats to use. So I'm like, all right, let's see if we can use canned chicken meat. I've already opened it and drained it. Um, and this is this is not my preferred um, canned chicken breast from Costco because they the kind of the the slam of everybody going in. There's no more organic right now, so this had like modified food starch in it. I just poured all the stuff off. Hopefully, it, you know it's still fairly clean, right? So we're gonna we're using canned chicken breasts. We're gonna use these are frozen green beans. These are some carrots that I got uh, in this last week's uh, CSA box, Community Supported Agriculture. I'll probably use about a half of an onion. We're gonna use most of this ginger. We'll peel that in a second. We'll use probably all the jalapeno. I got a cu couple of cloves of garlic, um, salt, um, golden bell pepper. And then I was going to use, um, uh, like this chili garlic sauce, but I opened it up and it looked a little questionable, so it's in the garbage. So we'll, you know, for some extra spice, I'll use some uh, Frank's Red Hot. I put just a touch of toasted sesame oil in. I'm gonna be cooking it with avocado oil. And there's not a ton left in here, so I may end up having to jump into the other bottle. Um, oh, and then I also have uh, uh, cauliflower rice. That, I, that I've been thawing out. I've got chicken stock. So you have some Chinese spice spice too. Like yeah, let's see here. That's what this is. Oh, this okay. is the spice I use. Um, and this, whenever I do stir fry, it is always just kind of what's in the fridge, and then you know I just kind of work my way through it. I'll heat I heat things up individually, and then pour them off in a bowl, and then kind of pour pour everybody back in the pool. To mix everything up, and so that cooked the different. Things. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but the thing with this is because it all cooks pretty quick, you want to have everything cut up wow. before you ever fire up the wok. And I'm using the wok. You could use a big skillet. Okay. So, so what we're going to do right now? Oh, and today's wine is uh, Kendall Jackson Chardonnay Grand Reserve, and uh, pretty tasty. Mm. Now, this is probably a good time to remind everybody, now is not the time that you want to be showing up at the ER. So, you know, don't overdo the wine. You know, it, I, I see people like letting their kids help. And I think that's great. Just, you know, make sure that any of the stuff that requires nice skills, you might want to be doing that. Um, but I still think there's ways to get kids engaged in that cooking process. So I tell you what, I'll, I'll start with the onion. I'm going to grab another bowl to be able to put the, the uh, onion, the sliced onion in. So I'm not going to use the whole thing. That's the other thing that I've noticed. Like, I was going to buy shallots the other day. There weren't any shallots. And a buddy of mine that is in produce up at Costco has said, they're getting like regular, they get like two trucks a day of produce. But he said his onions and his garlic are all of a sudden, he's getting back ordered on it. So, you know, I, if I had more room, I'd probably buy a bag of onions. But if you, you know, if you find them, you might want to grab a couple of extra just because we may go through a period of time where you can't find them. And I, you know, I use them you know, pretty much in everything that I cook, either shallots or onions. So I've got the window open because I'm gonna, you know, I'll end up generating some smoke in here so you can hear the kids screaming out the front yard. I, you know, I can, I think I can safely say that no child was harmed in the making of this uh, 
cooking demonstration. Now, I can't tell you what's happening to them on bicycles outside. Parents are ready for them to be out and about, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I, man, my head is off to people that have got small kids at home that are trying to navigate all this because, you know, it's, it's, it's tough enough to, uh, you know, n navigate kids and jobs. And, you know, I think the one thing that is that I've noticed some of the conversations I've had with parents is, you know, I think we've been guilty of kind of oversubscribing our kids, right? I remember when my kids were in, you know, all the different sports and all of the lessons and everything else, it was like you almost needed, you know, a separate calendar just to keep up with where everybody needed to be. And I do think that there is, you know, I think anytime you have something horrible like this happen, good stuff can come out of it if we look for it. And I think people are beginning to go, you know what, I think maybe having a little less jam-packed schedule once things I don't know that everything will ever go back to quote normal, but I think we, we'll get to where we're not quarantined at home anymore. Cooking with your family is to be one of those. A absolutely. You have time to do, yeah. Boy, and, and it's just, you know, sp spending, you know, quality time with family. You want to tell us first book about how you're putting that. Okay, so, so that it's yeah, sorry. Cutting. So what I did was I just, I, I whenever I'm going to dice an onion, I'll cut it. I, I, you, I'll always cut it in half, so I've got a flat surface here. And then I cut like, um, what would that be? Like kind of a, a horizontally, okay, coming all the way up. And then I cut like, I cut slices down through it, right? And then what I'm gonna do, I'm just throwing a couple of extra ones in here. And then I'm gonna take it and turn it sideways and cut it perpendicular. There we go. Okay, so we get it nice and diced. And it kind of, you know, the, the root end down here kind of holds it all together for us. And, you know, once again, keep your fingers out of the way. And then I just, the little bits that are on, I just slice those up. All right, now then, let's see if all of this got relatively yeah more or less you know this is i would call this kind of a rough cut because yeah there we go all right now we'll just toss all this in the bowl so we've got it done all right yeah i, I would except i'm trying to like kind of it to get it into this small bowl. It, that, that works great for when you're putting things like, what, or you're like putting them into a skillet. All right, so now then the jalapeno, um, I'm just gonna cut it in half, and then I'll cut the very end off down here, cut the stem off, and then I just use a, a spoon to scrape out the seeds. Because if you don't, then you end up getting kind of like jalapeno stuff up underneath your, your fingernails, which can end up reminding you why a spoon is a lot better idea. All right, that's done. And then the way I cut these is just kind of, I just cut lengthwise, so cut them in kind of matchsticks. And then we'll just put all those down and cut across them again. So just line them all up. And then and I've got one that was kind of catching right on the back of the knife. So we'll do that one individually. All right, put those there. And then I'm gonna, I'll put the ginger in with them. So let, let people good. know so they can keep up here. Yeah, so. so all right, so the next thing we're gonna do, in fact, I'll just go ahead and put these in the bowl right now. Okay, after this, we're going to do the garlic. And what we'll do with the garlic is we're just gonna, I've got two cloves here. 
manteca and just smash it flat with the knife. And that makes it a lot easier to get the, uh, the skin off. And <laughs> even if it's easier, it's still, there we go. So how much garlic are you? I'm just doing two cloves. Two cloves, okay. That's that one. Let's do the second one. And then just pull the skin off a bit. All right. I always just cut that little kind of root end off that little hard stem. And it's like, it probably is not that big a deal, but I just, you know, I, I really wouldn't want to get that bite that had that in it. All right. And then, so talk, tell us about how you're going to cut the garlic. So I'm just, what I'm going to do with the garlic is just, I'm going to slice it real thin and then like kind of go over it all with a, uh, you know, just kind of do a mince. Yeah. And, you know, once again, just kind of using my finger as a guide, you know, and it's just, you're just using the edge or the tip. But it's it's always just you know keeping those those fingertips you know pull back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just cut it. You know, and the thing with garlic is that I never want to put it like by itself in a really hot pan because it just it's so easy to burn it. And when you do, then you end up with this kind of acrid burn taste. And it's kind of a bitter taste. So, you know, I'll put this in with the jalapenos and then we'll put those oh, in. Cook them together. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And then we'll, we'll we'll also kind of put that in at a stage where there's already some food in. Okay. So it's not going in that a screaming hot skillet by itself. All right. And with the ginger root, what I do is that I just use a spoon, just take the edge of the spoon and just use that to peel the, the uh, that skin off of the ginger. And then what I'll do with it is I'll um, cut it real thin and then I'm going to mince it. And how much ginger are you making? And this is, you know, what is that? That's like a kind of a thumb sized piece of ginger. Okay. And these are just, you know, these are all just flavors. I mean, like some, I say all of this, you know, canned chicken is not what comes to mind when I think of Chinese food, but, you know, the, the ginger, the five spice, um, you know, the jalapeno. jalapenos, all of that kind of have that sort of kind of a hint of, of like Asian flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, really what, what stir fry, great catch with the belly there. Um, stir fry to me is just, it's a great way to, you know, cook up vegetables. And, you know, I, I hope that, Folks have been able to um, find a like a CSA that they can that they can use. I was reading a piece in the paper today, and they were just talking about how that whole sector has just exploded with all this stuff. And then the one in thing Austin. that it, well, in Austin, but not just Austin, just everywhere. And that you know they were saying you know people are having to you know really start thinking about supply chain stuff again. So, right yeah, so what I'm doing right now is I've got the, the, the uh, ginger, I'm just like cutting little, real thin coins. And then once I do that, then I'm gonna lay those flat and I'll slip it, then I'll like use that to mince. So I'm just cutting like real thin coins. Okay. Yeah, but I think the, the more we can buy food kind of locally, the better off we are. And it's not just us, but also the people that are providing it, the, the farmers and the ranchers. So, I, you know, I, I hope that that's another kind of outgrowth of all this stuff is, uh, you know, kind of a reassessment of uh, food supply chain. All right, so that's good enough there. I'll show you what that looks like. So this is all the ginger. All this the ginger, yeah. Bring it back in your mm-hmm. Put it back in the little bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Here we what's, go. Oh, beautiful. What's oh, I can smell that ginger. It smells yeah. Yeah. So the, the next is going to be the bell pepper. And since this thing is like 
as big as a baby's head. I think we'll probably just cut it in half. Okay. Just use half of it. So I'll put the other half over here with my onion that's hanging out. And then the way that I like clean up the bell peppers, I just stick my thumb in like underneath the, the stem up here and just pull it down. And you know, half the time, and this is another one of those instances, there's, a, there's always this kind of little, it's almost like it was a bell pepper that was going to grow inside the other one. And it tastes like bell pepper, so. All right, and I just kind of pull the, uh, those kind of veins out inside. I mean, instead of throwing all that big piece away, I just slice that off, toss the seeds. From the top, mm -hmm. okay. And then, I just lay it flat and just cut it into ribbons. And then what we'll do once we finish that is we'll, you know, lay those things all together and, you know, cut across them. So it's not going to be a real small dice, but there we go. Yeah, I think that. Knight could use one more pass with honing steel. You all, it, it, to me, it's always like real clear. It, it, bell peppers, I think, are kind of hard to cut. It, sometimes, if a knife is dragging at all, uh, it you you can tell on uh, either tomatoes or bell peppers. All right, so that's that one cut. Looking around, oh, carrots. Now. The other thing I was going to, I don't have time to do it today, but we'll do it on another episode. I use the tops of carrots, either saute them, but the last time I, what I did is I took these, I took a cup of carrot tops, a cup of uh, spinach, and made a pesto with it, and it was dynamite. Yeah, so we'll do that on, an, on another episode. So on these, I'm just cutting the, uh, the very tips off. I've already rinsed them off. And then I'll, what I'll do is I'll cut them in half. Did you peel these? No, I didn't peel these because these are like really young carrots. And, you know, like I said, I kind of washed most of the dirt off. So, and I'm just cutting them in half and I'm kind of teasing about the dirt, but, you know. All right. Okay. And how big of pieces are you going to want for the carrots? Um, that's a good question. It, you know, they're they're going to cook a little slower than mm -hmm. other things. I'm looking to see. I just want to make sure that I've got any of those little tips off because those things would burn if I didn't. Okay. All right. So I tell you what. I think on the so what I'll do with the carrots is I'll cut them one more time in half. Okay, so, I, so these things, you know, so it's like that. All right, now I'm going to split that down the middle. All right, and then once I get that done, then I'll, once again, kind of lay those things on and cut across them. So if someone had a really one big, large yeah, they can continue yeah. to... Subdivide it, yeah. And then, you know, I'm not going to try and do that whole big pile all at once. I'll just take these and just run the knife through them all at one time. And just, you know, once again, just kind of take the knife, square them all up on one end, and then just run through it and keep your fingers out of the way. And you know, th this is evident with stir fry, all the time is in the prep. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's like kind of pre corona, you know, you could go to, um, you know, Whole Foods salad bar, grab the stuff that was already sliced if you wanted to. And it, you know, and that might be available today. I, I just, you know, my, my thing is I'm spending as little time in the grocery store as possible. Yeah. You know, my my goal is to get it down to you know every couple of weeks. 
And so, yeah, in, in kind of keeping with that, next week, what we're going to do is we're going to do a, um, a, a salmon, I think the right pronunciation is pap in papio, which is in parchment. So we're going to, I'm going to use frozen salmon. I'm going to thaw it out. So that'll be the prep for next week is to make sure the salmon is thawed before class starts. And then we're, we're going to cook it in a uh, kind of a sealed parchment so that what happens is the parchment kind of puffs up and it, it steams the, uh, the, the fish. We're also going to put like a little bit of butter on top of it so it will baste it in the butter. It's yummy. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and this is one of those, I've never done it before. We're going to do it together and, you know, we'll figure it out. All right. So I got the carrots done. I'm going to grab another. Oh, here's the bowl for now. All right. Are you going to chop the green beans or are you going to just do some whole? Yeah, I think, I think these are good. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be some different sizes in there, but they're all the, they're all those little skinny ones. Yeah. So this should be good. All right. This is already, you know, and this is, some of this stuff is still a little bit frozen. So we're not going to put that into like a ton of oil just because, you know, the idea of frozen stuff going into a big bunch of oil, that's a great way to get way more excitement than you bargained for. All right. And that's the cauliflower rice. Right? Ca well, the cauliflower rice and the green beans okay, are also so frozen. And they're, but they're, they're, for the most part, they're thawed, they're, but there's still some frost in there. Mm -hmm. All right, so what I'm going to start with, let's think about this for a second. Um, let's start with, let's start with the onions and then the, then we'll do the uh, jalapeno. And then as these are done, then we'll pull, we'll pull it out to a, uh, a bowl here. Right, we'll start with this larger bowl. And then we'll get everything out. Then we'll make a quick sauce inside there. Um, put everything back in. Crack the egg. Actually, let's see. We'll put a little bit of stuff back in. Crack the egg. Get the egg going in there. Then we'll pour everything else back in. We'll get this done, guys. All right. Just you know, just give everyone a heads up. All right. Do something. So All right. here. So I'm gonna get the the um, the, the thing lit. All right. I'm gonna get this lock on here and I'm not going to I'm going to let it heat up just a little bit and then I'll add the avocado oil. How much oil will you use? I'm probably you know about this much in the bottom. Okay. Yeah. Yeah and it won't take very long before this thing starts to heat up. This, uh, this little portable burner does a, uh, a great job. All right, uh, now let's see what this thing looks like. Bam. All right, starting to get a little bit of smoke. So. All right, so I've just got about this much oil on the bottom. Okay. Like I said, I'm going to hit the the onions in there and pretty, pretty much right after that. Well, we'll let those get started. And then the way that I do this stuff is as I go with it, I'll add seasoning. So we'll add, I'll add this, the uh, uh, sesame oil towards the end. We're just going to let this. You know, you're going to put the, the jalapeno and um, garlic in with the onions. Yes, okay. I am. And I want to give the onions just a little bit of head start. Okay. Yeah. You know, the thing with this is that I don't have, I mean, I could crank this thing all the way up. It's just most people at home don't have that. And also, it's like if you're not a, a restaurant that has one of those wok fire rings, you're not going to get your wok anywhere close to the same kind of temperature. Plus, you would need an absolutely commercial bin hood to be able to pull that off. All right. 
So and get more data. And also the you know part of the thing that I like about the cooking stir fry is you don't like just hammer all your ingredients. You know, you're what you're trying to do is to keep things still, you know, kind of crispy. Okay, so you just added. I just add, I've added the, uh, the 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 garlic and the jalapenos. And you can smell those jalapenos. You can smell both the jalapenos and the garlic. Yeah. All right. Now, how, many, how long? What, what do you want them to look like before you? Uh, like I'm getting ready to come out with them now. Oh wow, that looks yeah. great. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm just using this is a thing called a spider, and it's basically I'm just trying to leave as much of the oil in there as I can. If people don't have that, they, they just use a spoon or a okay. slotted spoon. And the, you know, the, one of the things too with this is we're trying to get the stuff out of there fast enough so that the things that are left in the bottom don't burn. You know, if you have a hammered wok, which has got more texture on the sides, you can kind of push stuff up the sides. I've never had one that worked that way though. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to add more oil back in. All right, so got that there. Okay. Yeah, we'll add a little bit more oil because this is already starting to get smoky. So you really just kind of got them translucent? Yep, that's it. Okay. All right, now then let's do the uh, bell peppers. And I'll throw the ginger in with those. Okay, bell peppers and ginger. Yeah. Okay. And then. And you put those together because they are about the same cook time. Yeah, because I don't want the, I'm not going to leave the ginger in there long either. You know, and the bell peppers, they don't, you know, there's nothing really going on there. You just want them to get a little soft. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and actually, yeah, I'm not going to, I'll put the carrots in next That's when this comes longer, out. Right? So it'll take a little bit longer, but also, you know, once again, this can, you know, it can handle that texture element. Yeah. Because it's not like something that really has to, uh, you know, it, it's it's not like it's not like meat that I needed to cook. No, it's not only. Yeah, actually, just put these where I want them to go. Which is, yeah. So you're putting the. Uh, yeah, I'm putting because I'm gonna have everything going in, in this bowl. Yeah, okay. and that way too, it you know you get all the flavors. Going together. Okay, so you're already taking the bell yeah, peppers. Yeah, so I'm already out, right? taking the bell peppers and the ginger out. And I'm just trying to make sure that I keep just a bunch of the little stuff out of the bottom as I can because I don't want it to burn. So now I'm going to put the carrots in. I haven't done any of the five spice yet. So I'm going to add a generous amount of five spice to this because I'm going to use this to help flavor everything else. Yeah, I noticed you didn't put salt on yeah. the other. Yeah, I didn't. So I'm going to add a little extra salt to this one. Man, you can smell that five spice. Yeah. Five spice, you know? spice has got anise. You know, that's a good question. I know it has anise in it. I think it has coriander. Yeah, I'll let you. Uh, I'll look it up. Right. Mm. And let's add a little Frank's into this mixture here. Okay, uh, the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. The five spices made up of cinnamon, clove, fennel, star anise, and such one cup of corn. Ah, nice. The some recipes also contain ginger, nutmeg, and licorice. Ah, well, and the anise is that whole licorice yeah. flavor anyway. You can smell that frank. Yep. All right. Now I'm going to scoop these out. So the next we'll go with the um, uh, green beans. Okay. So were the carrots just beginning to get a little yep. soft? Yeah. Okay. But it's like, you know, everything in here is going to be pretty crunchy. Mm -hmm. All right. So we still have some, some oil in the bottom. All right, green beans. I think I'll hit those with a little bit of fish sauce. 
That'll be nice and stinky. Oh, yeah. And that'll also add some salt. Yeah, right. Okay, we'll hit a little bit of five spice just to kind of layer that in. Yeah. No, I don't know. Yeah, you know, it's like this is something that I just I, I remind myself every time I do it, I need to do it more often because it doesn't take long. It's a you know, it's a healthy way to cook. It gets you plenty of vegetables. Um, if you didn't get cauliflower rice, if you use regular rice, yeah, you can do that. Yeah, you can use regular rice. You can use quinoa. If you cook the rice first and then add it the yes. in, yeah. Okay. That's how, yeah, because obviously you're not going to be able to cook the rice in the oil. Right. Um, let's see. Yep, yeah, we're. I was wondering if they were still cold or not. I'm going to give them just a little bit longer. And I think next we'll do the chicken. Okay. And then at the end, I'll do the cauliflower rice. When I put the cauliflower rice in, that's when I'll do the egg. Okay. And then you'll just add everything back on Yeah, top. and I want to throw a little bit of uh, 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 sauce in there, too, so we'll figure out the sauce. The sauce is where I'm always the kind of the, like, hmm. You have to do some tasting, huh? Yeah. All right. Blend of smells is really yummy. Very interesting. Yeah, it's you know, this is certainly not a uh, you know traditional approach, but I think it's going to work all right. All right. Okay, so now I'm put both are. hands of chicken in there. Okay. All right, and now then, I'm just gonna get this. We're gonna add a spice of some Yeah, sort of I think what I'll do here there. is I haven't done any toasted sesame oil. I'll put a little toasted sesame mm -hmm. oil in. So why that? Um, because it has that, it, there, it, it's used in a lot of the sauces. Uh -huh. And this, you know, it, once again, it's just kind of adding all those different flavors in. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing them all at once. Um, like, like building a sauce. That would be the other thing we could have done with this, is build a sauce and then wow. pour it. And so I, that's why I've got the chicken stock out, because what I'm thinking about is a little bit of, um, we'll see kind of what we have left over in the bottom of this thing. My guess is you're going to taste it and see what it means. Yeah. I've seen this show before. <laughs> All right. Right. Now we're just going to pull that out. Okay. Let's take another chicken. Okay, you could use a uh, uh, shrimp. Oh, you could use. I mean, that's so, good. yeah. There's so many options there. All right, so now we're getting really close to nothing in the bottom, so let's see how much oil I got. Oh, there's enough. Let's kind of coat the bottom. All right, that one's a dead soldier. All right, now then, let's cut this open. All right, so now the cauliflower rice. Now the cauliflower rice. And that's kind of over, you know, that's. Like it, normally you wouldn't want to put this much stuff in a wok if you're trying to like, you know, cook it, like fry it hard. But what I'm going to do is just kind of keep stirring this in. I'm going to turn the heat up just a little bit. And 
I mean, you said you're going to add the eggs. Yeah, I'm going to have to do the eggs. Yeah. So what I've got, I'm going to let this go for just a second while I crack the two eggs. I've got a bowl here. I'll just crack them into it. That one. And then. I was just this spoon I have here that's going to curve the crust a little bit. All right. This one. All right. Okay. So pour the, so egg, pour the in. egg in. And this just adds some. Yeah, it just adds protein to it. It just, you know, it's like it reminds me of the. You know, stir fried that I've had before. Yeah. Now, you know, let's see how we do with this because it's kind of making it a porridge. <laughs> so we're going to cook this a little bit harder. See how this turns out. It may make it more of a cauliflower mash. Huh. Yeah, because it's like. It's it, the uh, the grains are kind of going together in it. I'm gonna taste it, and see what kind of evil I have unleashed here. Still needs to come up a step more. What are you noticing with the flavor? Mm, it doesn't have a, a ton of flavor. Okay. Um, which that doesn't like that's not a huge surprise because there's I didn't put any spice in there. So what I'm gonna do to remedy that, let's go with a little five spice. And then we'll add a little Frank's. It's a hot sauce, mm -hmm. yeah. And then of course if you follow along, you're gonna have a little bit of fish sauce. All right. Yeah, the eggs starting to cook, ah. and the greens are starting to separate just a little bit. Ah. You did turn the heat up. Do you think it's on close yeah. to high? Or? Yeah, for, I mean, especially compared to most um, burners. I mean, this thing is like. Twice the BTU, you know. I don't care what this one over here is rated. I never get this kind of a flame on it. So, mm -hmm. all right. Now then, what we're gonna do? We're gonna dump everybody back in the pool, and then we're gonna check flavor to figure out what we also need to do. So the egg is cooked. Yeah, I'm gonna mm -hmm. do a quick. Yeah, but the egg was pretty close to that. I just want to make sure this is hot enough that I'm not going to. Mm -hmm. So I right now have flavor. Ah, good. Oh, yeah. So all the goodies back in. Yeah, all the kids back in the pool. <laughs> all right, here we go. Yeah, I mean, I think it looks great. We've got green beans. Hmm. All right, so I'm going to check the flavor on this to see if it needs any adjustment. I don't really think it needs a uh, any other sauce because it's already going to have kind of layers of that built into it. Mm. Oh, wow. Good flavor. Yeah, I'm not going to adjust a thing. Wow, that's great. Mm. Actually, I am going to do um, a little bit of rice wine vinegar. Hmm. If folks don't have rice wine vinegar, what? Any, they, like um, apple cider vinegar? Any kind of vinegar? I, yeah, or like uh, squeeze some lime on it. I just want to brighten it just a touch, okay. which is what that did. Now, let me confirm that. Would wine also do that? Mm -hmm. that? You could, yeah. Not to the same degree, but yeah. yes. I mean, because it is an acid. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. I like that a lot. Well, guys, this one's been kind of a quick one, but so there is our wow. chicken stir fry. And then, like I said, next week we'll be doing the um, salmon in puppy oat, and I'll have the ingredients and everything we're going to use. And once again, you know. This is going to be one where it's like, oh, I don't have any salmon, but I've got frozen halibut. Okay, that'll work too, right? Um, so anyway, I look forward to um, cooking with you guys next week, and uh, thank you a great week. Thanks a lot.